welcome back. Now in this chapter, I want to go through how we can create an Azure SQL database resource with the help of a Terraform configuration file. So the Azure SQL database service is a platform has a service. Here the entire compute infrastructure is managed for you. So if you want to have a Microsoft SQL Server based database on Azure, one option is to go ahead and use the Azure SQL database service. So let's go on to Azure and first let's see how do you normally deploy an Azure SQL database. So here in Azure, I'll create a new resource. I want to choose the SQL database service. Yeah, I'll just create a new resource group. I'll scroll down. I'll give a name for the database. Here I need to create a new server. I'll hit on create new. Here we just need to actually give the details of the database server that is going to be hosting this database. But again, I said the underlying database server is completely going to be managed by the Azure platform. I'll just give a server name. This needs to be unique. It'll be appended in terms of its DNS name with .database.windows.net. I'll scroll down. You can use different types of authentication. I'll choose SQL authentication. Now you need to mention a username and password. Using this username and password, you can log into the database server holding this database via another tool known as SQL Server Management Studio. So you can use these credentials, log on to the database server, and you will have access onto the database, and then you can start creating tables, adding your data, etc. So ensure that you do keep the server admin login details. I'll hit on OK. I won't make this part of an elastic pool. We can then configure the database. Here we have different tiers when it comes on to the database itself. So based on the pricing model you choose, there'll be a certain amount of compute that will be allocated onto your underlying database. Here what we can do is we can choose the D2 based purchasing model. D2 actually stands for database transaction units. This is another metric that is used when it comes on to providing compute power onto your database, your Azure SQL database. I'll choose basic. This is the least cost option. Yeah, in terms of the cost, it's just an estimate cost of $5 per month. I'll hit on apply. I'll go on to next for networking. Now, by default, there'll be kind of a database firewall that will be part of the database server. By default, it will not allow any connections. If you want to allow connections, let's say from your workstation, so you want to connect onto the database server, you can choose the public endpoint in terms of the network connectivity. You can scroll down. Under the firewall rules, you can add the current client IP address. So this wizard will actually detect what is the current client IP address assigned onto your machine and it will add it onto the firewall rule. I'll go on next for security, additional settings, tags, review and create. And let's go ahead and hit on create. Now what this does is it will create two resources. One is an Azure SQL database and the other is an Azure SQL database server. Now this might take around four to five minutes. Now, if you want to connect onto the database server, then go ahead and download SQL Server Management Studio. This is a freely available tool. You can download the tool and you can install it. So if you scroll down, you have the download for SQL Server Management Studio. I've already downloaded and installed the tool. So once we have our database in place, we can actually connect onto the database server. So let's come back once we have a database in place. Once the deployment is complete, if you go ahead on to the resource, 
So we can take the server name and I'll just launch SQL Server Madmin Studio for my machine. I'll just launch it as an administrator. At the same time, if I just go on to all resources quickly, here you can see the Azure SQL database resource and the SQL server. This is the Azure SQL database server. So your database is basically residing on the server. The server is completely managed by the Azure platform. Here in the login for the SQL server, I'll add the server name. I'll choose SQL Server Authentication. Here I'll add the username and password that I mentioned during the creation of the database. And then you will be connected onto the database. So if you expand databases, you can see AppDB. And if you expand tables, you won't see any tables in place, but you'll be having a plain database hosted on Azure. This is based on Microsoft SQL Server. Now we want to ensure that we have this deployment done via Terraform configuration file. So let me first disconnect actually. So I'll right click and disconnect from this database server. Yeah, let me go on to the resource group holding these resources and let's delete the resource group because we'll be doing the deployment via Terraform. Now we are going to be using Azure RM underscore SQL underscore database for deploying the Azure SQL database. If I scroll down, we also have the Azure RM SQL server. So the database, remember, has to be hosted on an Azure SQL database server. So we need to have also the SQL database server resource in place. If I scroll down, then we have the Azure SQL database as well. Now, in this example, they've also given the deployment of a storage account. This is only if you want to actually enable auditing. This is giving an example of enable auditing for your SQL database. But we're not going to do that. We are just going to deploy the Azure SQL database along with the Azure SQL database server. So let me first copy the snippet, the resource snippet. We don't need the tags actually. So just for copying this, I'll go on to my Terraform configuration file. I'll paste it here. I'll just give a name for the server. Just give a resource name. Then we need to specify our resource group information in terms of the location you can copy this as well and put the location the version is 12.0 the administrator login details i'll put sql admin and here i'll just put a very simple password for now so this is for the azure sql database server next is for the sql database itself so we just need this i'll copy it here let me paste it. So just giving a database name. Then I can copy the same details about the resource group and also the location. And we need to give a reference on to the server name. So let's give a reference here. And what we can do also, we can just put actually a depends on clause. So, so this actually depends upon the existence of the database server. So once we have this in place, let me just save everything. Let's go on to the terminal. Let's create a plan first. So we have three resources to add, the resource group, the Azure SQL database server and the Azure SQL database. Let me hit on apply and let's wait till the deployment of the resources are complete. Now, after the deployment is complete, yeah, if I hit on refresh for my resources, I can see my server and I can see my database. Now, I won't be able to connect onto this Azure SQL server 
So remember I told you that for the Azure SQL database server, there is a firewall in place. And if we need to connect from our machine via the internet onto the SQL database via the SQL database server, we need to have a firewall rule in place. In the wizard, when we created the Azure SQL database, there we mentioned to add our client IP address. So similarly in our Terraform configuration file, we need to also deploy that firewall rule. Now for that, there is a separate resource. So if I scroll down on to the left, when I look at the resources for Azure SQL database, there is one for the Azure RM SQL firewall rule. Now, if I scroll down, I need to add this particular resource and allow traffic from my machine. So here, let me just scroll down. So I'll just give a name for the firewall rule. Give a name here as well. Need to mention the resource group. And also I need to mention what is the server name. So I can take that from here itself. And here the rule does also depend upon the existence of the server. Now, what about the start and the end IP address? So, so now I need to ensure that the IP address assigned onto my machine is entered there. So in my browser, I can type in what is my IP. Here I can see my IP address. Let me copy it. And then I can place it here in the start IP address and in the end IP address as well. I'll save this. Let me create a plan. And while the plan is being created, if I go on to the database server, here if I click on show firewall settings, here is actually where you can add your client IP address. Here you can see your client IP address. So normally you can click on add client IP. It will actually add a rule here with the rule name, the start IP and the end IP, and then you can click on save. So via the portal, this is how you would actually change the firewall to ensure that you allow traffic from your machine. I'll just discard this. So once the plan is complete here, yeah, the resource to add is basically the firewall rule. Let's apply the change. Let's come back once this is complete. Once this is complete, yeah, let me refresh this entire page when it comes on to the firewall and virtual network settings. Here yeah, I can see now the firewall rule in place and we should be able to now connect onto our same database server. Remember the username and the password is basically here what you've mentioned for the server. SQL admin is a username and the password is Azure at the rate one to three. And here you can see you are connected onto the database server. So in this video, I want to show you how you can use Terraform to actually deploy an Azure SQL database and an Azure SQL database server.